Hey, welcome to the Unstoppable Agents. This is the show where real estate agents come to build their business, build their wealth, and build a life of impact and significance. This show is, is going to be amazing. I am super excited. You know, the show we celebrate Icon Agents, which is the highest award from a production perspective that the EXP has to offer. And our guest today is a two-time Icon Award winner. Doug Jenke is joining us from, from Northern California in, in Reading. Doug, hey, welcome. Thank Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm. I am super Where excited about. It. Where are you located? You know what? I'm in. I'm in Dallas. So I am in the suburbs of, of Dallas, Texas. Somebody moves here every 3.3 seconds. A California license plate. Yeah, a lot of them with California. I just had uh, folks move in from from LA this last weekend. It's on the other end of the state, but uh, but still part of out of California. Doug, I, I enjoyed chatting with you a little bit before the show. I would just love to know more about you. Tell me about your real estate journey. I went to the one hour seminar, left after 30 minutes, and I said, I'll never be an agent because there's no pay, there's no benefits, there's no salary. I can never do this. Fast forward 24 years, I've closed over 1,000 escrows myself without my team. Wow. And it was a better decision than working for a part-time wage, let's put it that way. So I, lo I love that. Not only, you, I could never do that, but why would anybody want to? What in the world? I lived over in Europe and I was playing baseball, but I had a regular job. You know, I was making all right money. It wasn't that bad. But you get six weeks paid vacation. You get this, you get that. And then I come to America and I look into real estate and there's no pay. There's no benefits. There's no insurance. There's no nothing. And I thought, wow, I need to go do something. And I went back to my three part-time jobs and I said, now I got to really do something. And I got into the real estate. Uh, March of 98, did not close an escrow for three months and really was questioning the wisdom of that decision. And in the next uh, six months, I closed 19 in six months of my first year. And since then, except for the little downturn in seven and eight, I've closed between 40 and 50 escrows a year by myself. It's brilliant. So I so love that. So you closed 19, I think you said 19 in the next six months. So within yep. the first nine months, which yep. is done. So what I love about that is so many people will say, you can't, you can't do that, but you can. And maybe you were just too dumb to know any different, but, uh, but I expect that you were hardworking and, and really got after it. What did you do to just nail it like that right out of the gate? Back then the office that I was at, we were right there on hotel row in Reading. Internet didn't exist. Pictures didn't exist. We had a black screen with green letters. And I worked almost every Saturday and Sunday that I could. First three months, as a matter of fact, I had three other jobs. And then I would work at real estate Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So I was doing seven days a week between jobs and real estate. And finally, I did get a couple escrows going. And those escrows were going to make me more money than I was going to make at my part-time jobs in the next six months. And I was going to close it in one month. And I said, I might want to give this a try. And I, all I can tell you is one of those questions that come up, Brian, is, what did I do to be successful? Hell, I don't know. I just put in the time. Literally, that's really what it is. And then I have my little secret to success that that's too with me today. But I just put in the time. I just worked a lot of hours. Yeah, time and pressure, right? you know, whether it's erosion or whatever else, time and pressure really solves all solves all problems. So I love that. I always also, I think that uh, effort will beat talent just about any day of the week. So if you work hard, it's not that you're not talented, but if you worked really hard at it, then that'll overcome just about any obstacle. So good for you. And obviously it's led to a tremendous career. It's led to a tremendous career. Well, it's, uh, it's not been bad. I had my own business for 16 years and then the old pandemic hit. My wife said it's costing me X per month to keep my office open and a full-time secretary and a part-time secretary and rent. And I said, I'm tapped, I'm done. So we closed the shop and I made the jump over to EXP because I had a buddy who's in the business who, uh, he'd been with EXP for a couple of years. He's right under Brent. And uh, he's like, you got to join, you got to join. And finally now I convinced myself that in spite of my $14,000 a month overhead, I was doing well and making money. Turns out I, I was doing well, but I wasn't making money. And I got the uh, the model explained and then spoke with Brent. And I said, okay, let me give it a try. Because one of the things is as a known local entity, and I know everybody, I was president of the association, traveling director, blah, blah, blah. I didn't feel good going to a fellow broker and saying, give me a 95% split. You're gonna make nothing. And then I'll be here for a year or two and then I'll move on. So eliminated the locals just because I didn't want to go in asking for some ridiculous split, which I would have gotten just being who I am. So the EXP model was nice. First off, it wasn't local. I couldn't really offend anybody. And when you did the numbers <laughs> and the vote, 
when you knew the numbers in the breakdown uh, between make and icon status, it worked out pretty damn well. Uh, I love that. It's not often I hear avoiding of being offensive as, yeah. as part of the decision criteria, but, but I'm glad it worked out. That's uh, that's terrific. So it, it, if I heard that, did you have your own brokerage? Did you hung your own shingle or were you just leading your own team with an office? I'm a broker. Um, we had four agents plus myself. My wife was from the back office. We had Daisy as our secretary full time. We had a part time social media listing coordinator. And I was involved with Craig Proctor. I was paying three grand a month for the system plus coaching. I had Boomtown and some coaching. It's great to have all of that, but it comes at a cost. And when the whole demic hit, we were not essential for 10 days. My wife said, Here's how much money we have in the bank. This is what I got to write a check next week. I made a decision, and it was the best decision I made. So did you, all intents and purposes, did you just move $14,000 from the expense line into the profit line? Theoretically, and, and yeah. In pocket? Yep. That's pretty much what I did. A full-time secretary with the health insurance was over three grand a month. California, 15, 17 bucks an hour. Part-time was another 1,500. So that was 4,500 that literally went back into my pocket, get rid of the office rent, the proctor system, the whole thing. And Craig's got a great system, but it just, it was a lot of money. And the results, we were learning a lot, but the results weren't coming in an endemic hit. And I said, I'm out, I'm tapped. Went and focused on just back to me being an agent. And I brought one of those agents with me, Tony. And we, she was a brand new agent. She'd literally been in the business about one month when she comes to my office and the next month I say, oh, by the way, I'm shutting the shop. Do you want to stay with me? It's a tough sell, but she did. And she's been with me now for two years. And uh, so she's part of the Doug Janky home selling team. And we were trying that when I had the business and we just had everything already set up that way. So we just didn't bother going back and change it to Doug Janky. Just too lazy. <laughs> That's great. That's great. So you were part of coaching prior. And of course you've joined a, a terrific organization. So are you still, are you still in coaching with someone or oh, tell me know, about that? Um, what's funny is uh, no, I'm not currently. I mean, since I joined EXP two years ago, I've closed about a hundred transactions by myself and Tony's thrown on probably another eight or nine on her own as a buy side. I don't know. I'm at a point after 24 years, I'm not that inclined to spend a lot of time with other people and to get them up to be blunt. I did that for 16 years trying to build a business. But now I'm just focusing back on, on building my business. So no, I just, I haven't done any coaching now. I'm just kind of doing what I do. So tell me about that. So where does your business, uh, where does your business come from? Well, it's funny. You ask what is one of my secret recipes. I have only one recipe. I don't do social media. I don't do Facebook. I don't do any LinkedIn, Instagram. I don't do any of that stuff. I read an article when I first got in the business, kind of fortuitous that I read this article. And it said back in 1998 that less than 10% of agents stay in touch with their clients once they close escrow. So when Brent Gove asked me here, oh, probably almost a year ago, to do his the presentation, I decided to check into it. What is the percentages today? In today's internet world, where everything is a click away, the percentage is actually 9% now stay in touch with their clients. So for 24 years, every three months, not every month, not five times a month, once every three months, my clients receive a written, I write it, I don't copy and paste, I don't take stuff off the internet, I actually write it. I have a self-depreciating humor, so I always include some zingers on myself, but my clients hear from me four times a year the closing line is always your greatest compliment of my service is the referral of a friend or family member. Let me show them why you trust me with your largest financial decision. I send out about 400 letters every three months, figuring about a 10% return. That's almost one a week. And that's how it's worked out for almost 20 years now. Wow. So I don't have a big budget. I have one lead generation thing that I actually do pay about 280 bucks a month plus mailing for the four times a year. That's my entire advertising budget. Last year I did 52 sides totaling like $18 million by myself. So there's a secret in success, Brian. Just stay in touch with your clients. So how amazing is that? So number one, that's incredibly profitable. And it's insanely profitable for what you're investing in the business. But the other thing is you're working with people that you want to work with. So do you s send cards to people that you didn't enjoy the transaction that you don't want to talk to or don't want to see again? 
I stay in touch with everybody. And I've had some of the best referrals I've ever gotten were people that by the end of the deal, you thought for sure it was hatred. If they saw you on the street, they were going to run you over. And then six months later, you get a call from Bob and Bob says, Tony said that you did a great job and I need to use you. And I scratched my head going, we were yelling at each other to close the escrow. And here we are, he's giving me referrals. And one thing that I've learned and it's taking a thick skin is people are making decisions on hundreds of thousands of dollars, million dollars sometimes. It's not a common decision process for people and they freak out, they stress out, they take out their angst and frustration. And was one of the hardest things I had to learn is not everything is personal. And good. we work day to day, Brian, with hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's always zeros in the numbers that we work with. But for a person, they're deciding whether they're buying bread or gas. We're deciding if negotiating on a $400,000 deal makes sense. So they get into those numbers and it can overwhelm them and they can react against you. And I've had people that at the end of a deal, upset, didn't like this, didn't like that. I always stay to the facts. I let the emotion die away. And then I will mostly always get a phone call. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to blah. And, but they stay in my database until they tell me to pound sand. And in all the years, I think I've only ever had one person tell me to remove them from my database. Now, like all agents, you lose some, go list with another agent or something. Sure. They may become friends with them, family refer them. But my repeat business, one of the things that Craig Proctor requires is you're supposed to go and do the origin of your business. And back when we joined in 2016, my wife was able to break down the numbers statistically. And it was like 96% of my business comes from repeat referrals. And the easiest phone call you ever make, Brian, is the one where you get the message that says, hi, this is Tom and Leroy said I should use you. You can't screw that up. It's almost impossible. So I'm gonna double click on this. So you're sending one card per quarter. Are you calling them every month? Are you anything? Are you doing any other forms of contact there? Are you doing events or anything other than uh, than those cards? When I had my old business, we were actually on the main drag and we have a very popular, it's actually one of the most popular car show parades on the West Coast. And so we would invite a hundred guests for a barbecue. So we okay. used to do that. We moved our office, we got off the strip and we don't do that anymore. It's funny, it's almost sound very un esque but if I had an insurance agent sending me 37 touches a year, I would probably throw 36 in the trash. I find that every three months, and it's not scientific, it's just dug tific Every three months is just enough to keep you top of mind, okay? And it's a letter. Like this one, we have a brand new law in California, AB 38. It's about a fire hardening required inspection. So I wrote a little bit about what the market's doing, and then I included a side B, which I normally don't do, but it included this new law and the website where they could get this uh, inspection. I'll test base them again in three months and that's all I do. I've never been one that sends cards, recipes, phone calls, when the market- well, And that's wonderful. Through, yeah. I don't, you shouldn't feel you're selling $18 million last year and that's working really well for you. I think that's the lesson for folks is so often we think more is more and that's just doing more things oftentimes spreads people too thin and they get a lower return out of all the things versus you're getting a great return out of just doing one thing. So I, I think that's awesome. Information overload. I don't need to tell you, you probably get more than I do just because you probably do more business, but the inbox is just constantly inundated. My people get a letter in the snail mail with a stamp on it. Up until I had about 150 clients, I actually wrote every address by hand and every note, every letter had a note in it. Yeah. At 150, it starts getting a little intense. But I've trained my database to expect that. And I tell them when they ask for Chloe, Brian, thanks, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna put you in my database. And for the rest of your life, you're gonna hear from me every three months. Is that okay? So I close escrows with that as them knowing they're going to get something from me, whether they like it or not, every three months. And I just sent my one last, as a matter of fact, it went out last Friday. So. I will generally get between 12 and 15 calls every four months from a letter. What's going on? Where's my house value, et cetera. And that's all I've done for my success. For the rest of your life. I love it. People talk about being a realtor for life, but if you're putting your money where your, uh, where your mouth is or your, your, literally your script is for the rest of your life. That's, uh, yeah. that's awesome. We, for lack of a better term, I just how I put it. When we do an escrow and we close escrow, we have just stuck our clients with the biggest debt they will ever incur in their life and they love us for it. <laughs>
think about that. We stick people with four or five hundred, and I say sticking in the relative word as a joke, but we stick them with sure. four or five hundred thousand dollars. They're hugging us. They're inviting us to their barbecues. They want us to meet their kids. Why wouldn't you use that goodwill for some payback? That's so great. That's so, so great. Doug, thank you. So you've been amazing. You've been an amazing guest, and I appreciate you sharing that. I'd love to just, as we wrap up today, I'd just love to hear any parting thoughts, anything that you want to make sure that our audience knows or learns today. Do your job right the first time, and then once you've done it, stay in touch. That's the best, because that'll help you through the good and the bad markets. In the good markets, it'll be really good. And in the bad markets, when people are getting financially struggling or divorced or whatever, they will reach out to you. And by them reaching out to you, you can help them and make some money on the, as, as a good deed. And such good wisdom. I think so often we get in a hurry and maybe think cut corners or I don't have time to follow through on that or whatever it is. And the, the shortest path is doing the right thing the right way. And that'll pay off today and tomorrow and everything. And then stay in touch with them. People love you. They, I had people that I even still to this day in my new office where I'm parked now, I have people that just, are you at the office? Yeah. And they come by to talk to you. So do your job right the first time, build that rapport and then stay in touch. And if you do, you'll have a thousand escrows in your pocket in 20 years. That's awesome. Doug, thank you for joining me today. This was uh, Doug Jenke from Redding, California. I'll include links to your website and uh, and how to reach you in, cool. in the description below. So if anybody is moving to to Redding, then, uh, then they can reach you. And, and of course, if you've got anybody moving to Dallas, we would love to serve them. Have a good day.